the book <laughs> is, um, I, let's see what its exact title is, Photographs from the Gilman Paper Company. And actually, it might be smart to begin at the beginning, which is at the Gilman Paper Company, which I don't think exists anymore. And they were headquartered in New York City, actually in the Time Life Building at Rockefeller Center. Uh, Howard Gilman, who was the head of the company, um, decided in the, I think about the late 70s, to begin a photograph collection. And he enlisted a man as his curator named Pierre Apoxine. So from about 1976 or 77 or so for the next 20 years, they collected photographs. And the book um, was sort of the culmination of that collecting effort in a certain sense. Um, at a certain point, uh, they realized that they wanted to do um, a very special album of the photographs in the collection. The interesting thing that they did was that they enlisted a man named Richard Benson to do the offset reproduction. Um, Richard is an interesting character in that he learned offset reproduction in the Merchant Marine. He then went on to become a photographer and also to become an expert, probably one of the world's experts on the reproduction of photographs. And so they enlisted Richard to do the project and Richard had the support of Howard Gilman to the extent that Richard actually asked them to buy him an offset press and put it in the basement of his house so that he could work 24 seven if he wanted to and also so that he could um, do it exactly the way he wanted because many of the reproductions in the book have actually passed through the press six, I think, there's one account that I read even 10 times. I, in my opinion, one of the wonderful things about this book is what Richard tried to do was really to simulate the original print. And of course, in the 19th century and into the early 20th, there were many kinds of photographic prints that were made, whether they were daguerreotypes or salt paper prints or albumin prints or colotypes or whatever they were. And so it's about difference. And um, what I, in, in relation to contemporary books, in relation to digital printing, et cetera, et cetera, um, I sometimes wonder if that notion of difference, um, the nuanced difference, has disappeared. I mean, to me, it's, it's like looking at a computer where everything's the same. You know, everything has the same quality, the sort of, I mean, yes, the graphics can change, but you're dealing with a surface that's always the same. And um, there's something about that loss of difference that I find, um, what? that it's a loss. Um, so the book, in my opinion, really demonstrates this notion of difference. And um, I mean, the world would be a pretty boring place if everything were the same and we were all the same, et cetera, et cetera. Just goes without saying. Anyway, yes.